Hi everyone and welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about the linearization of nonlinear systems. Last time we developed a theorem that let us tell for a linear system whether it was stable or whether its equilibrium, which only happens at the origin, is stable or unstable just by looking at the eigenvalues of that matrix. Nonlinear systems generally can't be represented as matrices, but it turns out that we can look, if we're looking near equilibria, then they are well described by linear approximations. And that's what we're going to be working on today, is developing those approximations and then using them to decide whether the equilibria of a nonlinear system are stable or unstable. So basically, again, this is part this is part of our plan for trying to figure out how solutions to nonlinear equations behave, even in situations where we can't find them. So the idea here is that linear systems are easier to understand. We have a lot of theory developed about them. Um, and so it would be nice if instead of a nonlinear system, we had a linear one. This is an idea that was also used in calculus. When you had a, a, a complicated function, you could understand its behavior, at least locally, by looking at its tangent line. So we're looking at tangent line approximations. Of course, now we're in a multidimensional system, so we can't use tangent lines. We use tangent planes or tangent spaces. And it, but it works essentially the same way. We can look at a linear approximation of a nonlinear process, and at least in a small neighborhood, that will be good enough. And of course, the nice thing about the definition of stability is that it's local. It's about what happens to solutions near a particular equilibrium, arbitrarily near, right? This is for all epsilon, for very small epsilon values. That's what we're talking about. So we're going to extend this idea of tangent line approximation into the two-dimensional realm. And it goes like this. Uh, so let's consider we have a two-dimensional nonlinear first-order autonomous system. So y equals f of y, or written out x prime equals f of xy, and y prime equals g of xy. Uh, now suppose that there's an equilibrium, uh, ye equals xeye. Uh, and near this, then near this equilibrium, we can approximate this nonlinear system using this linear system. The linear system is two by two because it is a system of two equations. And the entries in the matrix are exactly these partials that we've looked at before, right? So we take the partial of F with respect to X and Y and the partial of G with respect to X and Y. And then we plug in the equilibrium into each of those partials. So this matrix, which I'm going to call J, is a constant matrix. It has just numbers in it because we've plugged in the equilibrium. Uh, the, the variables here are called Z. So this is not X or Y, but it is a new variable that represents how far the solution is away from the equilibrium. Right? So it's kind of centering things. And this is, again, you can think about how this works with tangent lines, or you can think about Taylor series. It works in a similar way. And in fact, this is essentially the second term of the Taylor expansion in two dimensions. Uh, the first term, or the constant term, goes away because at an equilibrium, both f and g are equal to zero. So we have no first term. The second term is this. The higher order terms turn out not to matter, at least not for the questions that we are going to be asking. And then, so this is called the linearized system, right? This whole thing is the linearized system around this equilibrium. Each equilibrium will have a different linearization. So we have to do this Jacobian, this, this matrix J for every individual equilibrium. So the matrix J is, it's called J because it is called the Jacobian matrix. And it is a very, very useful thing. There is an equivalent to this for systems of more equations. You just, you know, you just make a bigger linear system and things work exactly the same. But we're going to stick with two by two for now. All right, so that's the Jacobian matrix, and that's the linearized system. Uh, so as I said before, the definitions of stability, instability, asymptotic stability of an equilibrium, they only depend on the, neighborhood, the behavior of the system in some small, arbitrarily small neighborhood of the equilibrium. And in that neighborhood, the, equal, the linearized system dominates the behavior of the nonlinear system. So the stability of the linearized system is the same as the stability of the equilibrium in the big system that's nonlinear, right? So we can tell stability just by looking at the linear approximation. That is a great step forward because we get to convert hard problems into easier problems. 
All right. Now, I should note, though, that this only works if it turns out that the linear, linearized system is either asymptotically stable or unstable. The, the situation where it's stable but not asymptotically stable is much murkier. Things get a little bit weird, and so we can't say for sure that the linearized and the nonlinear non systems match in that case. But these two extreme ones, the ones that are much more common, those ones it works just fine. All right, so sit, let's see what this looks like. Let's try an example, take it out for a spin. So I'd like to find the equilibria of the system that's given here, and then find the linearized system at each, and then analyze the stability of each equilibrium. Okay, so first our, our task is to find the equilibria. We just do that by algebra. We set the right-hand sides of these equations equal to zero. So from the first equation, we get either we get x equals 2y, or y is equal to minus 4. And from the second equation, we get y is equal to 2x. Okay, so putting these together, we have two different combinations that could happen. happen. The first possibility is that x is equal to 2y and y is equal to 2x. There's only one way that that can happen. It's if both x and y are 0. The second possibility is that y is equal to negative 4 and y is equal to 2x. Well, that means that x would have to be equal to negative 2 to make that work. So we get the equilibrium negative 2, negative 4. Okay, so we have equilibria. We can check that off. To find the linearized system for each of these, we need to look at the Jacobian matrix. Right? So the Jacobian matrix will be formed of the partials of f with respect to x, the partial of f with respect to y, g with respect to x, and g with respect to y. Hopefully you can see that pattern. Shouldn't be too hard to memorize. Uh, so this will be, let's see, so the partial of that first one with respect to x should just be y plus 4. And the partial uh, with respect to y is a little bit more complicated. I'm going to do it with the product rule. You get minus 2 times y plus 4 uh, plus x minus 2y times 1. In the second equation, much easier to take my partials. The partial with respect to x is 2, and the partial with respect to y is negative 1. Now, that's a generalized version of the Jacobian. We need to do it, we need to plug in each individual equilibrium. So, if we want to know the linearized system at 0, 0, then we're going to have z is equal to, we plug in 0, 0, we get 4 um, minus 8, 2, and minus 1, z. Okay, and then if I want to do the, the Jacobian at the other point, right? so let's see, I'm going to be plugging in negative 2, 4, so let's just walk this through. It's going to be 0, uh, let's see, 0 plus minus 2 minus 8, so that's going to be I say minus, sorry, plus 8, so that's going to be 6 and 2 and 1. So the linearized system at minus 2 minus 4 is z prime equals uh, 0, 6, 2, minus 1, z. And I'll just my prime in there that I left out before. All right, and then to figure out the stability of each of these, all we need to do is look at the Jacobian matrix of uh, at each point. So for the stability of 0, 0, I need to look at 4 minus 8 to negative 1, and I need to find its eigenvalues, right? So... I solve for the eigenvalues, I get 4 minus lambda, 
times minus 1 minus lambda plus 16. So that will be lambda squared. Let's see, minus 4, minus 4 plus 1. So minus 3 lambda. And then minus 4 plus 16 plus 12. I can solve that using the quadratic equation. 1, 2. I get 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 minus 36 over 2. So 3 halves plus i times the square root of 27 over 2. So here it's complex positive real part. And that means that this is unstable. Okay. And then finally, to figure out the stability at minus 2, minus 4, I need to find the eigenvalues of my matrix 0, 6, uh, 2, negative 1. So 0, 6, 2, minus 1. So I'm going to get 0 equals minus lambda times minus 1 minus lambda minus 12 is lambda squared plus lambda minus 12, which I can factor as lambda plus 4, lambda minus 3. So my eigenvalues are lambda equals 3 and lambda equals negative 4. Now, since at least one of them is positive, that means that this is also unstable. It only takes one positive eigenvalue to make something unstable. That's it. That's, uh, that's linearization. Uh, this is going to require practice. So remember, the main thing that you're doing is taking your nonlinear system, find your equilibria, then you... Compute the Jacobian matrix and plug in each individual uh, equilibrium into the Jacobian. And then the eigenvalues of that Jacobian will tell you whether the equilibrium is stable or unstable. So it's a little bit roundabout, but far better 